We're ready for part two of our series, yeah. and I'm here with uh, Thomas Di Lorenzo from Loyola University in oh, yeah. Baltimore. And uh, we're going to get into the very heart of the book, Economics in One Lesson Now, here with you. But I'd like to just read this one sentence and ask you to defend it here. He says, uh, it is often sadly remarked that the bad economists present their errors to the public better than the good economists present their truths. What do you think about that? Well, he's talking about the broken window fallacy, uh, I assume, in that, that, that passage. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's, you can't really be an economist or think like an economist unless you understand the broken window fallacy, I think, uh, which is the essence of opportunity cost. And uh, one way I uh, explain it to uh, my classes is, you know, I teach at a Catholic university and, they're, uh, and they're, we're always encouraging students to engage in some sort of community service. So I tell the, the class that um, the economics department has our, our own version of community service. We're going to buy each of you an aluminum baseball bat. And we're all going to march down North Charles Street, which is the main street north and south in uh, Baltimore. And we're going to bash in all the windows of the cars all the way down. And it's a job creation program. That's our community <laughs> service, I tell them. And uh, then I ask them, what, what kind of jobs do you think we'll create in the city of Baltimore? We'll reduce unemployment. We'll, we'll reduce poverty. And, uh, and they scratch their heads for a minute. And they, well, glass repair, garbage collection, uh, extra uh, private security guards. And, they, and I write down on a blackboard a list of all the jobs we're going to create. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I ask them, well, well, why don't we burn down some buildings on the way? That, that'll <laughs> create love, even more. We'll, we'll, we'll eliminate poverty altogether, won't we? And then they start thinking about it. Well, wait a minute. There's something wrong here about, about this. And, uh, and, so, and if they've already read sort of the theory of opportunity cost, they'll catch on that, uh, of course, that's what's seen. Those jobs are seen, the, uh, the, the uh, glass repairmen and all that. But what is not seen is all the resources that had to be transferred from somewhere else or reallocated uh, and jobs destroyed there so that we can fix up the glass and hire the security guards and so forth. And so the, the whole key to thinking like an economist really is to think about uh, what is not seen as well as uh, what is seen in, in words of... Uh, the immortal Friedrich Bastiat. Right. Well, uh, and yet it seems like um, it would be something easy to understand once you hear the story sure. uh, of the of the broken window and to understand the fallacy and perhaps to see what's wrong with it. If that's so, why is it so persistent? I think uh, economic miseducation has a lot to do with it. I think uh, economists, especially uh, including uh, academic economists when they teach, are so enamored with uh, mathematics in model building that they, they ignore or downplay uh, the, really the, the basic fundamental truths of economics like opportunity cost because it's so mundane. It's not, uh, you can't really model it or can't express it in mathematics that well. And they, they tend to forget about it. And then students who take the classes, they might learn these sophisticated models, but they don't learn uh, really basic economics. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's why the Austrian School of Economics has uh, always been so appealing to me. It's always been uh, rooted in understanding how the economic world works as opposed to showing off your math skills. Right. And I, I think the economic miseducation uh, is the main reason why so many people and members of the public uh, don't get this real simple idea. So opportunity costs are always invisible, so they don't show up in the economic data. Right. right? So, um, Not always. Sometimes they, some of them do. And this is, makes, makes it less interesting than for an empirical economist. Right, uh, yeah, well, yeah on, the empirical, on the empirical side, uh, and the old joke about the economist uh, uh, looking for his watch across the street when he knew he lost it on the other side of the street. And when he's asked, uh, why are you looking for your watch over there when you know you lost it over here? And he says, the light is better over there. Uh, the, that's very true about economists because when they undergo their research, they're, if they do empirical research, they're limited by what kind of data they can get. Even though there are very important questions that need to be asked and addressed uh, that you just can't measure uh, empirically all the time. And so they tend to ignore these things. And, uh, and so, uh, so there's a lot of truth to that old joke about the, about the economist and his watch. So Hazlitt calls this chapter two, after he explains the lesson, he calls it the blessings of destruction. Right. But he, uh, he talks a lot about war uh, and the, the idea that things such as uh, 
war uh, can be good for the economy, war prosperity, you ever heard that phrase? And, uh, and of course, uh, some people do become wealthy through war, the people who sell munitions to the government and, and so forth. That's what's seen, you see that. But then once again, uh, uh, what is not seen is all the resources that are taken out of the pockets of the taxpayers to pay for it. And also, another slightly more sophisticated part of this is that, uh, you know, the market system is uh, one big network uh, that displays the international division of labor. And it's peaceful and cooperative. We work together to produce goods and services and we buy and sell from one another. War is just the opposite. War is blowing things up and destroying things and killing people. And so the, idea, the very idea that war can produce prosperity in any sense is absurd on the face of it. And uh, Henry Hazlitt explains that as, as simply and as straightforwardly as uh, anybody I've ever, I've ever read in just a, a couple of paragraphs, really. And uh, von Mises does a great job of that also in, in Human Action in his uh, chapter on war and the economy. It's also true with uh, uh, natural disasters. Right. We played this game on the Mises blog. Anytime right. there's a fire or a flood or anything, we do see how, how many days it'll be before a professional economist yeah. makes a statement. To yeah, we friends. always end up digging up an article from the New York Times or the LA Times, <laughs> some, some, some pseudo-economist saying, well, the bright side is that <laughs> it's good for the economy. But in fact, there was an earthquake in Southern California yesterday yeah. as we sit here at the Mises Institute on July 30th. And uh, sure enough, you're, you're, I bet uh, yeah, tomorrow, if we, look at, if we do a web search, we'll find a statement like this of, of thank goodness in this time of, of the housing crisis and the, the subprime crisis and we're in a recession, God sent us an earthquake in Southern California. <laughs> Somebody's going to say something like that. And, uh, and uh, when they do, I think we should send that person a copy of Economics in One Lesson. Whatever reporter we discover uh, says that thing. So do you find that you're teaching? Uh, in your intro introductory classes, consists of uh, just day after day of applying this lesson in oh, yeah. different ways. Yeah, yeah, not even not just introductory classes. Mm -hmm. I, I taught a new course I put together called the Political Economy of War, and uh, uh, and uh, you know the, the very first week of readings involved uh, the broken window fallacy and uh, Ludwig von Mises on war and the economy, in which he elaborates on the broken window fallacy, among other things. So a real basic economics uh, that can, uh, to get you to think about the economic consequences of, of war, and is certainly uh, uh, the broken window fallacy is, is certainly one of them. Yeah. Uh, do you think this new edition will be helpful to you? Uh, oh yes, it's a beautiful edition, and it's, it's uh, priced very well, and uh, congratulations on uh, being able to do that. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be buying box loads of them because I always have. For 20 years, I've been buying copies of Economics in One Lesson because as, a, as an economics professor, I run into people all the time who ask me, uh, what one book can I read that's not too complicated and technical, a lot of math, uh, and understand economics? And right. Economics in One Lesson is that book. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dr. My pleasure.